Sneak attack. This is like the only thing rogues do in combat besides bonus action disengage. If you're going to play a rogue, you should know how sneak attack works and everything about it. Welcome to pack tactics. This is a little strange. I'm covering beginner stuff, so my approach needs to be a little different. Before we read the feature, let's talk about the name Sneak Attack. Never guess what the features do in D&D by only reading the title. You have to read the mechanics of it instead. The title of the feature is irrelevant to what it does. Tons of people make this mistake. I even know veterans today who don't know how this basic feature works because they guess the feature. It's really, really sad. It's not even complicated. Forget everything about other games, video games, and what have you. This is D&D 5e. It has nothing to do with backstabs. It doesn't only work in stealth because it's called sneak attack. Forget all of it. Don't make up the rules. Read the mechanics. Here we go. Sneak attack. Once per turn, you can deal an extra 1d6 damage to one creature you hit with an attack if you have advantage on the attack roll. The attack must use a finesse or a ranged weapon. You don't need advantage on the attack roll if another enemy of the target is within 5 feet of it. That enemy isn't incapacitated and you don't have dis advantage on the attack roll. The extra damage increases as you gain levels in this class. You can sneak attack with all these weapons. Here's the list. Now, to activate sneak attack, the easiest way is for your ally to move within 5 feet of the enemy you're going to attack. Melee marshals are basically your best friends. If you happen to have disadvantage to your attack, then sneak attack won't work even using this method. Second method. If you have advantage on your attack, sneak attack activates. Getting advantage in this game is super easy. Like later on, you can use steady aim or hide through bonus action to get it. Those are the only two methods you should know. You don't have to meet both. You only need one of those methods. This isn't hard to understand. I've DM'd for a rogue for five levels. That's weekly games for a few months. And they still had to ask me if they had sneak attack or not. I politely answered yes or no, but I also tried to suggest to read the feature. But that never worked clearly if they kept asking me all the time. It was annoying. Anyways, like I said in the beginning, this is basically everything rogues do. Like, if you know this, then you know how to play a rogue. Let's talk more advanced and talk about basic math. Gator! I see you over there. You're trying to steal my money again. Oh, Kobold! I wanted to buy some drip from our store. I want the Goodberry ice cream shirts. Oh, well, then it's fine. I might as well plug that in. Three new t-shirts are now available. Gator being cute, me with Goodberry ice cream, and lastly, me celebrating Pride Month. That's right, it's June 2022, and I personally wish everyone a happy and safe Pride celebration. It's optimal to be inclusive with your D&D team, and other people outside the game. You can find the shirts at Teespring, link to the store in the description and comments. Thank you for being your absolute best and joining the pack. Back to the video. Math. Sneak attack does 1d6 extra damage. Let's find the average of that. A level 1 rogue with 16 dexterity versus a creature with 13 AC. The chance to hit is 65%, so the average of that sneak attack alone then becomes 2.45 damage. If you have advantage, it's 88% to hit. 3.41 average damage. I didn't include weapon damage because I don't know what kind of weapon you'll use. This is just a basic guide. You do good damage at level 1, by the way. Now for everything. Boom! And again, I didn't include the weapon, so that's why it looks so low. So take this with a grain of salt. It's slightly higher, not much. 
The math doesn't change much if you use something like a rapier. I expect like a 5.1 to 6.4-ish DPR increase. Showing all this pretty much debunks the claim that rogues are overpowered. I think it's the opposite. I think they're underpowered. You might ask, where's the falling point? It's at level 5 because everyone gets extra attack or third level spells and they're way more powerful than sneak attack. Sneak attack has an incredibly hard time competing with only having one attack. If you get extra attack somewhere through a build, then you can compete a lot better, but it still struggles here and there, but not as much as before. The math for sneak attack involving more attacks is actually a huge pain in the butt to find. It will be in the advanced guide to rogue. No idea when that will come out. Some people might point at booming blade as a solution, but I think that cantrip sucks. Booming Blade will be a standalone video with sneak attack eventually. Basically, my solution is just to get extra attack through a build. Crossbow Expert and Sharpshooter combo is a solution, but I still advocate you get that extra attack with that combo. That's pretty much the basic guide of everything you should know. Uh, one last thing. Let's go back to sneak attack. It says once per turn and not once per round. So that means you can sneak attack off your turn through, for example, haste with readied action, as I've explained in my haste video. Or you can naturally get it through opportunity attack. If you manage to sneak attack twice consistently, then you're doing really good damage. That's twofold of your normal damage. And no, this isn't cheese or an exploit. This is a basic interaction that's totally intentional. Here's the sage advice to prove it. And yes, you should absolutely let rogues do this interaction because they're underpowered. Let them. Anyways, I think you get the point. I hope I earned your subscription or support on Patreon. Buy a t-shirt if you want. They're really cool. Thank you for watching. Happy Pride. Bye-bye.